This is problem 51. The baseball is hit almost straight up into the air at the speed of about 20 meters per second. A, how high does it go? B, how long is it in the air? As always, we want to get a visual representation or to just put something in place. So first I want to make up as positive. That's the first thing I'm going to do. And the ball is hit almost straight up. Well, we know that a projectile follows the path of a parabola. When you hit something with a speed as it goes up, the speed decreases and then it goes to zero and then it falls back down. So we hit the ball at a high H. So this, let's use broken lines. This is the earth, the ground. The ball was hit here and it took a path like this. The initial right there. Here we have the final. Also we have the initial distance and height we're talking about. Here we have the final. So this is just kind of a expression or a visual expression of just you know to see what's going on. So because we chose up as positive we like to find the so how how high does it does it go you'd like to find the displacement and that displacement can be found by using equation 12c from the book itself so v square which is the final velocity equals initial velocity squared initial velocity squared plus two times the acceleration the change plus two times the acceleration times the change in distance. So this would be final distance minus, minus initial distance. So we have the initial velocity, final velocity equals zero. We have the acceleration. So now let's solve for the final distance. So that's the distance on the top of the curve. How high does it go? Okay. So we know that the final velocity is gonna equal zero at the top of the curve. So zero is the final minus the initial velocity. So we just call that negative 20 meters per second because this is zero, okay? And this is also a square. Another thing is that initial distance is equal to zero. And the acceleration is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. The distance and the final height, or how high does it go, is going to equal 20 meters. So y is equal to 20 meters. The next portion, how long is it in the air? So, so the time of flight can be found from equation 12b with the x replaced by y because we're dealing with the change in y, the change in height and using a displacement of zero for the displacement of the ball returning to the height from which it was. So the ball was hit from y naught equals zero and it's gonna to return to that zero. So basically that might be confusing, but what we're saying is that the ball, the ball is at 20 meters, right? And it's gonna return back to zero, which what we could say is that it's gonna travel another 20 meters, right? And 20 minus 20 is going to equal to zero. So if we use the equation final height minus initial height plus initial velocity times t, this is equation 12c, by the way, 12b, by the way, plus one half the acceleration t times times square. What we're saying is that the displacement, so the change in distance, right? So if we move over the y the y's, the distances, as we just said that this is going to equal to zero. We're coming from 20 meters high and then we travel another 20 meters high to 20 meters minus 20 meters is zero. So this is going to go to zero. So what we have, take this away, let me write this over again, so zero. So now to solve for the time, all we have to do in this case is factor. Okay, so we factor that out. 
So now we can say, okay, t equals zero and zero equals initial velocity plus one half the acceleration times time. So we're solving for the time. So negative cancel out the negative. And when you plug and chug, the initial velocity is equal to 20 meters per second. And the acceleration is 9.80 meters per second squared. And that is going to equal to 4.0 seconds. To solve this problem, all we need is two equations. First equation. Change in y. Second equation, and that's it.